Trashomaniacs. Hey, welcome to Geo Gearheads. This is episode 512. That's half a kilobyte, if you know anything about computers. And tonight, well, I should say I'm Chris of the Northwest, along with our host, Daryl W4. And Daryl, tonight, we're going to talk about cord systems and how to tie knots, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Because it's always very important to tie a very secure rope around your cache so that your cache doesn't wander off, especially when it's an ammo can. Mm-hmm. And those nanos, oh. the, the nanos, it's a really tricky, but it's not a rope. Usually it's a, you know, fish line. Oh, maybe that's what I've been doing wrong. Hmm. You get, you know, you have to find the right cord for the right cash too. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm interested to, to know more about these cord systems, you know, not that we're going to talk long on them. <laughs> no, but we needed someone who's a true expert. Yes, we did. And for that, we brought in Limax. Welcome back, Limax. Thank you. So nice to be here. And, you know, 512, that's two to the ninth. Ooh, there we go. Two. Got to throw the... my math facts in. Thank you. <laughs> what would, where would we be without your math facts? Uh, finding someone else. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm, GSM <laughs> times two is a little disappointing. This isn't a show about music. No, well, oh. that's spelled wrong. It's C H O R D, chord. Right. If he wants a show about music, I, you know, I've, I've got somebody who can bring my uh, my strum stick in here. Yeah, we we could, you know, I, I, could I do think a few, that's the few request. Power chords. Mm -hmm. so, sounds like we need a few power chords, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we, before we, we get do... into. Yeah. Before we get into our tying of knots, though, we did get an email from a retired guy who's been on the show a few times, a fellow Geo Gearhead, and he actually had a GIF film that didn't make it in. So he uh, sent out the link. Uh, you can actually find it on geocaching.com. He's running ads to publicize the uh, video and bring people to it. But we'll also put a uh, link to the show note or in our show notes to it. But what I thought interesting about this is we know there's a ton of people, well, probably not a ton literally, but you know, there's, <laughs> there's a number of people who have submitted uh, videos and not all of them got in. A lot of them didn't make the cut. And from what we've heard, we had some really, really good videos this year that didn't make that final cut. So we're very interested to hear what some of those other uh, ones are and the experiences of the uh, cashers who created those videos. So make sure to drop us an email at uh, geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com. That's geogearheads at cashamaniacs.com. If you have a video that uh, didn't make the cut this year, because we'd definitely like to uh, check that out, share it with our audience and get a little bit of your story behind it. So, Limex. Yes. We've scared away Chris. I noticed that. I, I guess I mentioned math, and that was enough for him. It just overwhelmed him already. Oh, gosh. How quickly. <laughs> I, I figured it was because he didn't have the uh, dexterity to tie the knots that we're going to be talking about it, tonight. It might be. Yeah, it was funny. I, Yeah, speaking of tying knots, I happened to watch... Um, Adam Savage putting together some kits and he had his only, only the knots he would use with it. You know, he doesn't use a overhand. He actually uses a figure eight because a figure eight is easier to un untie than an overhand is. And it doesn't cinch up on itself. It's, it's like, yeah, I can see that. And it's, it's still a good stopper knot. So, <laughs> uh, sorry. We have a, a comment from GSM times too. He says, if you put all of the gift creators on a scale, I'm certain they would make more than a ton. That's yeah, if they're all as big as I am, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of the gift creators, he, he's, I think he's talking about those who made it into the gift and those who just submitted to the gift and didn't make the cut. 
So I'm going to go with that. Works for me. Yeah. And and on that note, uh, one of the reasons why you know we're looking for just the people who have not made the cut is they're the ones who are no longer bound by the uh, NDA that is part of the GIF. So you know, we'll hopefully get uh, some of the creators uh, on the show at some point to talk about what they went through to create their uh, videos and what they've learned. It's always a fun thing to uh, check out. Uh, and Pizza Ninja says it, uh, uh, he, or is asking rather, if uh, Chris is feeding the reindeer. I don't. Oh, think I guess so. yeah. They wouldn't be. They would be in the Seattle Tacoma area this time of year, wouldn't they? You know, they summer down there, from what I hear. That could be. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Seaback Tribe uh, asked if he got washed away from all the rain coming down today in the Great Northwest. Ooh, could be. Yeah, it, that might be. Yeah. Because he it, hasn't it, popped back on, possible. and yeah, that's just. Uh, it, for all we know, he's got uh, flooded out of his studio, yeah. got washed away. Oh, no. Seabeck uh, uh, tribe suggests maybe he's feeding the salmon. Oh, very well. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, didn't I hear they actually put in some um, like salmon stairs or something like that in? in the sound or somewhere near the sound. I wouldn't be surprised. They've been doing those uh, fish ladders all over the place. Yeah, fish ladder. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I spent probably 20 years ago, maybe more uh, like a good hour examining one of them that has all of the neat, uh, you know, this is how a fish ladder works kind of science. Mm -hmm. And it just was absolutely fascinating. So I want, I want to go back and learn more about it because shortly after that, I also had discovered that uh, uh, before the fish ladders and everything, they were do- using trains to repopulate streams and rivers and lakes and stuff. Oh, so they'd go, oh yeah, they're, they're like DNR, you know, mm-hmm. different uh, uh, states would do this, would drive the trains over bridges, just open these big panels on the side, and fish would pour out. <laughs> Yeah, the um, I know that the lake where uh, uh, where I would summer. I mean, how well? How do you put where I would spend summer vacation every year? Um, I know in later years it was being seeded. Um, there were there were actually salmon, the sil- silver side salmon, the the small ones, but the uh, it's a word that begins with K, like K- coconi or something. I, I can't remember. Uh, what kind of salmon mm-hmm. we would call we call them silver sides, and then they would they would actually stock the lake with a uh, trout every summer for us. Up there, yeah, the trout is what I know most often being stocked. But yeah, apparently they do it with all kinds of fish in all kinds of areas. It just depends on where it is. Yeah, but Chris of the Northwest apparently hasn't been washed out of his studio. Thank goodness he is back, and I think we've misunderstood this. Uh, uh, week's episode entirely, and I'm not sure how we got to fish talk <laughs> from talking about cords and knots and stuff like that. Well, in order to keep your line nice and strong, you need to tie some good knots. You know, if you don't tie a good knot in your reel, the next thing you know, all your lines in the water. Uh, GSM Times 2 says, last week we were more on topic with the randomized show than we are with this week's <laughs> A show that actually has a topic. Uh, all right, so let's get back to the chords. Let's do that. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I, you know, I just today I was solving another what three words puzzle. You know, that was uh, actually Chris. Chris, we can't hear you. Oh no, we can't. It's it's safer that way. Okay. Got it. He's he's to be seen and not heard. I can handle that. That way we don't have to worry about the bad dad jokes. <laughs> anyway, it was a it was a recursive puzzle that when you got those three words put there, took you to a location, then they got you another word and so on. And so it was kind of this collapsing pyramid or however you want to put it. But it was um it was really kind of a neat puzzle concept to uh, get it. And of course the coordinates are near work. I'm not anywhere near work and not going to be anywhere near work for the next six weeks. So it'll have to wait. (laughs) It's pre-solved. So it makes it that much easier to find later. 
It does. And it's funny because it's on one of the roads that I usually take when I don't feel like take, being on the freeway. Nice. Well, Pickle Ninja asked if there was a, a song about chords. And yes, that's what Chris was singing when we couldn't hear him. Yeah. I think there's one about calling you. You've, you've tied me up in knots, too. So, wow. okay, <laughs> let's let's go ahead and get on with the topic here, because, I mean, we do have some things. I mean, this I I, I can say this um, topic was my suggestion and it actually came up from a, con- a concept, a comment by GSM times two that he made during a randomized show a few weeks back that I happen to be in the chat room for, which doesn't happen very often. And it was when you were. It was actually when you were reading the two emails I sent in, one about the what three words um, video, you know, what's wrong with what three words. And right. seriously, we don't need to go into that. But yeah, what three words has problems. If I say more than that, you know, I'll probably have a lawsuit heading my direction or whatever by the creators. So yeah, they tend to be uh, overly <laughs> litigious. They have a tendency to be confrontational and not work with people. They work against that too. people. Yes. Which is not a good way to be. No. no. But they're they're good at buying advertising on uh, YouTube, especially. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, GSM times two question happened to, to um, relate to the Google Plus codes, which I actually noticed only recently within... I had to been within the past, this past year because I mean I know that was one of the one of the topics I had for the Catching the Northwest show I was on that I didn't quite get to, and um, you know so I decided to put it up front and actually I'm gonna I'm going to preface that by um, talking about another coordinate system right before it which kind of ties into the plus code system. So let's uh, let's set the Wayback Machine to uh, 1959. Uh, we are talking about the Maidenhead cord- coordinate system, which has been around it, since about 1959. I, I know when I did the research on this, it was you know different sources, different um, different stories is what what really happened with that. Um, the Maidenhead system, I first became aware of it as a ham radio operator. In fact, the ARRL, which is the American Radio Relay League, sells a map that has the Maidenhead uh, quadrants on it that you can, you know, mount in your ham shack, you know, which, of course, you know, since that's all radio, you're the only one that sees it. But it's, it's a good mm-hmm. reference when people say, oh, yeah, I'm at these these sets of letters and then that gives you a reference as to where they are um the maidenhead coordinate system um was actually originally used for a vhf it was uh was actually used as was actually known originally as a qra locator system and it was limited at that point to european coordinates you know since it was developed in germany for a european centric and, you know, we, we will get later into, if we get time, where we can talk about, oh, let's talk about, the, you know, the numerous datums that have happened over the past 300, 400 years, you know, and really how, I, I will say this, the datums are better suited to where they are created than other parts on the world. Mm-hmm. You know, we do use the WGS-84, which is based on NAD, I think it's NAD 29. I think it was what it was based on or, or anyway, but you know, it's a Limax. Yes, sir. Same philosophy also works for maps, right? Whoever makes the maps tends to have a better map of their area than the rest of the world. Yes. So same sort of thing. It's, it's like we live on this oblate ellipsoid or something like that. Ooh. That's not exactly uh, smooth in all places. I was going to call it a big blue marble, but no, <laughs> your term is better. <laughs> I do call it the big, big blue marble still. You know, those of us that are of an age remember a PBS show called that. Now, I can't remember what the show was about. I just remember the title. That and the electric company. 
Oh yeah. I used to subscribe to the magazine and I thought and the tune Ooh. is now going through my head. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> You're welcome. That's no charge. Thank you. All right. So what oh yeah, Maidenhead. I I tangent I went off on a tangent. So to calculate maidenhead coordinates, I mean you get it from your regular latitude, longitude coordinates. I won't call them GPS coordinates because the system really is much older than that. GPS just felt it was a good good use for what they were trying to do with it, you know, and eventually the GNSS. But um, it, it used uh, the latitude longitude in pairs, and each pair of characters, now these, the maidenhead coordinates are in um, uh, a pair of letters, pair of letters, pair of letters. And actually, I think it does, just, yeah, it starts off with, it goes letters, numbers, letters, numbers. And it alternates, you know, as, to as much precision as that you want with it. Um, each pair of letters encodes the longitude followed by the latitude, which is backwards from the way that most of us think about. It. We say, "Oh, yeah, it's lat long." We don't think long lat. But what it does is, it takes your latitude and longitude, and if you've got it in some other form, you convert it to decimal degrees because. You know, that really is the easiest way to work. An integer followed by some bad random fraction because 60 is not a good thing to divide by in base 10. So after you've got your decimal degrees, what it does is it normalizes them by making everything positive. Uh, to latitude, it adds 90. So instead of going from negative 90 to positive 90, it will now go from 0 to 180 where zero is going to be the South Pole, 180 is going to be the North Pole. And they do the same thing with longitude, except they add 180. So instead of going from negative 180, roughly at the, uh, see, it's at the international date line, I think, or roughly right around there, you know, whatever's, whatever's on the other side of the earth from um, Greenwich, you know, go from zero at that point, all the way wrapped around the earth to 180, to, excuse me, 100, 360 coming back to that same point. You know, so zero, so zero at Greenwich is now going to be 180. So after, so it does that first. And then the first pair of numbers uses kind of a, a uses what they, they call it base 18, but that's kind of really a misnomer because it uses the letters A through R. So it's eight, the first 18 letters of the alphabet. These are all capital letters. And what, what they do is they take, they, they take the longitude, they divide it by 20, and then uh, take the integer part of whatever's left from that, add one to that, and then that's your letter. So it, it slices it up into 90 sections, or excuse me, 18 sections going around, each one going to be about... Uh, 20 degrees so that you get the full 360. There with the uh, latitude, it divides it by 10, since, of course, latitude has a shorter range than longitude does, and then takes the integer part and adds one, and that's going to be the, your second letter, again, A through R. And then it takes the remainder of what was left over, that integer part of what was left over from the longitude, divides that by two, rounding down, and that becomes the third digit. And then the remainder of the latitude, you round down, and that becomes the fourth digit. So that's where you get your numbers then after that. And then after that, it takes... <laughs> you know, the, you know, the, it, it makes sense if you actually read it. You know, trying to describe this like this, it makes it very, very difficult, and you're trying to help people visualize these parts. And it's really hard. It's like, well, you do what with what? Well, and so, I'm looking at the show notes going, this doesn't look all that tough. No. But describing it seems impossible. Right. And describing it is where we have, you know, kind of this problem with this is the fact that, you know, I'm trying to describe this in a way, you know, that kind of makes sense. And then, you know, the third pair is then base 24, which uses letters, and these are lowercase letters, A through X, that give you your third coordinates. 
and then more pairs is like you could actually use numbers after that to get the next piece and everything else. Um, I know. Let's see. I know. I I'm, I'm trying to remember. It's like it's like I think my maiden head around here is. I want to say it begins with a C, but I I I'm not remembering anymore. But it was like C something. And then whatever the numbers were after. And I want to say 7-3, but I think that's completely wrong. But anyway, that gets you within a step, you know, coordinate, and then the next coordinate, and the next coordinate. As as you get more and more precision, it gets you closer and closer and closer. Now, I know that there are geocaching puzzles out there based on Maidenhead. In fact, Chris, didn't you say there was one in your area? Yes. That's where I first learned of Maidenhead. I I yeah. realized, oh, this is real. This is not something they just made up for the puzzle. Yeah, it's it's um it's a real concept. It's you know, like it's been around, you know, for over 50 years at this point. You know, okay. actually, let's see, we're coming up, well, we just passed 60 years on it, you know, roughly, you know, just based on what I could find with that. And you know, so it uses you know, it uses these pairs of letters, and it's actually a way of simplifying it for lack of a better way of putting it you know it's like oh i don't have to remember you know the exact latitude and longitude i could just say i'm at this grid square and this is where i am you know and that's that was a way of compartmentalizing the information that seriously in a way makes sense and that you can reverse engineer in an easy way which is I think part of the reason for the way, what they've done with it. Now yeah, and I'm, I'm envisioning just a really simple puzzle where it's literally just the chords in maidenhead. So you have like, you know, yeah. BR 29 you know, AX or something or something like that. Yeah. yeah. That, I'm not sure that gets you within enough precision. And I can't, I can't remember what the, what the precision is going down. I don't think that's, I do not think that ended up in my notes anywhere. No, it did not. And yeah, I should mention this is based on WGS 84, of course. IARU in 1999 decided that you are going to use WGS 84 for this. <laughs> and, you know, the IARU is, you know, the end all to be all when it comes to these sorts of things. All right. <laughs> 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 and yeah I, I like uh gsm times two's comment he says and this is supposed to be easier than dividing by 60 yeah it's it's a different way of coding it i mean it was it was you're sectioning up the world and you know that's actually even what utm was you're sectioning up the world into these bite-sized chunks bit-sized chunks nibble-sized chunks so that you've got something that's not as long as trying to remember 15 numbers. Well, and I'm thinking by doing it this way, it probably does actually make it easier to read out on something like a radio where the fidelity isn't necessarily there. You right. know, it's supposed to be two letters, two digits, two letters. So, you know, if you're missing one of those you, or two of those, you know that you've got a problem. You right. know, it's easy to identify that, you know, Hey, we missed something. Mm -hmm. And it actually would be using, they would actually use the phonetic alphabet to do that. You know, they would not just say CQ, they would say Charlie Quebec. And right, right. just to make it as clear as possible. I, um, yeah, another complete, complete tangent. I know when my dad was getting his private pilot license, uh, the aircraft he was in, uh, if I remember right, the, uh, the, la the tail number ended in A, Alpha. And he actually said A one time, and the tower misunderstood it as eight. So it was one of those things. It's like, yeah, you need to, you need to actually, yes, um, phonetically use these things so that you know you your information gets across, and you don't spend too much time on the radio, you know, especially when they're you know a you know control tower. Of course, is going to be controlling quite a bit now. Ours here in town. I don't actually, I don't know what level we are now, but back then, yeah, you know, we were basically considered a recreational airport 
and also the airport for um, the lab, which made two runs a day to the Nevada test site. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was funny because, you know, the lab plane would take off and we'd see it go right over the top of our house, you know, to and from twice a day. And we had, we had friends that actually were on those flights going back and forth sometimes, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, today I'm going to go to the Nevada test site for a while. And then I'll be back for dinner. So yeah. Okay. Uh, another tangent. Yep. Yep. Well, we move on to the uh, uh, Google plus codes though. Cause that's, yeah, let, I think what really tripped this up and you know, we can blame GSM times two for it too. Right. We can. I mean, I, I, I blame them all the time. Sure. You know, like, yeah, I, I, I curse him. You know, as a fact, I, I had to go up to Fort Bragg and visit a really beautiful area just because he coerced me into helping with highway one. I mean, how dare he? That just seems unreasonable. It just, it was very unreasonable. And you know, the fact that I'm actually going to have to take my daughter up there when she home for Christmas. I mean, that's even more unreasonable. Wow. Spending time with family. Oh gosh. Yeah. And wow. spending time with family in a place that I fell in love with. <sighs> All right. Moving on to plus coats. Um, I, I don't remember when I first noticed them, but suddenly I was saying, well, what's this plus code stuff that I'm seeing? It's so like, you know, part of the way I've used Google Maps is to say, okay, get me the coordinates of a place. You know, you tap on a place to get the coordinates so that you can then do something else with it. And I was seeing this plus stuff there, and I really didn't know what it was. And so I started, um, when, I, when I did the Caching in the Northwest show, I started looking into it. And it's very interesting. Plus code actually is also called open location code. Yeah, you know, that was that was the uh, that was the name I I put in the show notes here um, the open location code definition and the specification. They were two different documents. Now, as maybe um, really not a shock to anybody, this was developed by Google. It was developed by Google Zurich and released in late. October 2014. So it really has not been around that long. It's, you know, roughly seven years old at this point. So I think it's even, it's actually even newer, newer than uh, what three words. Yeah. By a little over a year difference. Yeah. Uh, what I found very interesting to this is that the encoding is virtually identical to maidenhead encoding, which is why I did that one first because the encoding of this is very similar and it also uses the WGS84 datum, which is interesting because it was developed in Zurich. I, I guess, well, I mean, this was after the IARU said, you must use WGS84. So that, you that need to have be... a more Russian accent when you say that. Yes. Oh, no. The Russians use their own encoding system. <laughs> I know they do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, GLONASS does not use WGS84. And I, seriously, I don't know what Galileo is using. If they're using WGS84 right now or not, I'm, I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> we do know that GPS still does use WGS84. Yes. And for those of us in North America, we appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the, the calculation on this one, it's I, I'm actually going to go to the specification itself. I mean, again, these are these are coded in pairs of characters, longitude followed by latitude, which there again is reversed. Now with maidenhead, you were putting stuff on left to right. With plus codes, you're putting stuff on right to left. So, yeah, they're, they're, their pairs are recorded, each one right to left, with a plus data separator after the first digit. So, and they're coded in a modified base 20 numerical system, which is why I'm going to go to the specification as soon as I find it here. Because the digits that get used for this are the numbers 2 through 9, followed by C, F, G, H, J, M, P, 
Q R V W X. And this is a base 20 system. It uses zero through 19. For the... Like to buy a vowel, please. Yeah. Well, that's part of the reason why it is what it is. <laughs> um, open location code symbols have been selected to reduce writing errors and prevent accidentally spelling words. Hmm. So, and, and these are what they use. So this is the equivalent of what three not words. Yeah. What three not <laughs> words. Okay. Yeah. That word that works for here. And yeah, actually reading through this, it's like, you know, you, you read this, it gives you the input values, the format separator, the padding character, which is a zero. You know, zero is used by padding character before before the format separator, which is the plus. Yeah, actually, um, I'm going to read this verbatim just because I, I think you know it really it really is it is somewhat interesting and it actually you know shows how people are thinking about doing this. So I've already talked about the character set and what the digit is, digits are that gets used. Plus is considered the format separator and used as a non-significant char character to add, aid in formatting. The padding character, which is the zero character, is used as a padding character before the format separator. So it's like you could have U plus 0030 or something like that. Code the digits and ordering do not change in right to left languages. The latitude number must be clipped to be in the range negative 90 to 90. The longitude number must be normalized to be the range negative 180 to 180. Okay, so they, they clip one and they normalize the other. I mean, we're basically looking at what we usually use as latitude longitude, which is from negative 90 to 90, negative 180 to 180. There again, what do they do that? They add 180 to the longitude and they add 90 to the latitude. Or, excuse me, the other way around. No. No, I had that right. <laughs> Latitude, longitude. The numbers, the letters sound so familiar. So anyway, yeah, they add 90 to the latitude and 180 to the longitude to force them into positive ranges. Encode both latitude and longitude into base 20 using the symbols above for five digits each, i.e. to a place value of 0 0.000125. So again, you're using decimalized degrees for both of these. Um, the following provides an algorithm to encode the values from least significant digit to most significant digit. So you add 90 and 180 to both of those. Then you multiply both of them by 8,000. And you take the integer parts as latitude and longitude, respectively. You prefix the existing code, in other words, put it in front of what you already got, with a symbol that has an integer part of longitude, longitude modulus 20. So in other words, divide by 20 and take the remainder. And that's what you're going to get for that. Uh, prefix the existing, and then prefix, prefix the existing code with a symbol that has the integer part of latitude modul modulus 20. So it's going to be longitude, latitude, longitude, latitude, longitude, latitude as it goes across. Divide both the longitude and longitude by 20 and repeat this and then re repeat these steps another four times to get the first five digits. So that gives you the first 10 characters of the plus code. And then this the seems least... like a lot of work that no one's ever going to want to do, but well, is easily codable. Yeah, that's why you've got computers to do this sort of thing. And you you hit it on the head. It's easily codable. Yeah, and then it takes and then and then it uses to do the uh this this is the part I like. It's like after doing all that, you add 90 to the latitude, multiply the fractional part by 2.5 E7. Now that is very much computer speak. That is two and a half times ten to the seventh power. But 2.5 E7, yeah, that's that's definitely computer speak. But that take the integer part as a latitude and then 180 to the longitude, multiply the fractional part by 8.192 E6. So it's 8192 times 10 to the negative to 10 to the sixth power. 
Gia sometimes still too says, I'm still not understanding why this is easier than degrees 34 dot, you know, blah, 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 in negative eight, 118 dot, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure if easier is the wrong way of looking at it. It's a different way of encoding it to get information across in a smaller space. And um, the thing is, I know with the, with, this um with this open location code specification uh there is a way to shorten the length depending on you know what your precision is now if we you know it's like it's like a moment i saw 8.192 i was like okay that's that's uh what two to the 13th power i think 8192 i know it's a i know it's a power of two let's see 1024 is 10 11, 12, yes, 13th. And I'm sure the 2.5 E7, I'm sure that's really actually supposed to be 2 to the 8th, but they didn't say 2.56. You know, they were, but I mean, it's like, oh, so why isn't it 2.6? Because they rounded it. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, Seaback Tribe says, uh, well, my brain is so confused, even more than normal. Yeah, and th this is one of those, I, th I think the answer is simply don't try to understand this one too much. Yeah. It's you go and use the converter to do it because this is not something that's really designed for you to go and look it up on the map. It's something that's designed to make it easier to communicate more clearly what the location is. But again, right. it's probably going to be available for some puzzle caches. Right. Everyone here who's listening to this understands navigation systems, understands longi longitude, latitude, if you want to put it that way, maybe latitude, longitude. Um, but, you know, you look at, the, you come out with these and you're like, I don't have anything I recognize. And I, I think, you know, with Maidenhead, with plus codes, and even with what three words, they were looking at a simpler way to uh, to communicate the information as to where people are. Um, we do know there are some inherent problems with what three words based on pronunciation. Uh, there some of the choices that have been made uh, with with things, and uh, you know th there just are some things now. You know, I'm kind of going through this is because I, you know, I, I realize this is a lot of math. And of course, you know, that's really where I can't say I shine. I, I geek out of it, geek out over it quite a bit. It's like I like to understand what they've come up with and why they've done it. And, you know, my illustration here is just to show how similar plus, you know, the open source code, the plus codes is to Maidenhead, which came before it, they're mm -hmm. just using different symbols. You know, there, there really isn't, I mean... There's nothing new there, under the sun? There's nothing new under the sun. I mean, okay, they're using some different numbers, you know, to do their division and how they are separating it. And, you know, looking, looking down here, I mean, they talk about code precision. Um, you know, if, if you're using a a code length that's only two letters that is considered a um, precision in degrees of 20 of 20, 20 degrees. Once you get to four, four symbols, that's down to a one degree precision. By the time you get to six symbols, it's one twentieth of a degree. I don't know why they put it that way. I mean, it's about 5,566 meters. So just about five and a half kilometers. Eight symbols, you get down to 278 meters. Ten symbols, down to 13.9. Uh, by the time you get to 11 symbols, you're in a 2.8 by 3.5 meter box. So, you know, it's just it's just kind of how it just keeps on going down. Oh. All right, we are running a little long, so why don't we hit uh, one three words, and then we'll probably have to wrap, wrap it wrap it up, wrap, wrap it up. It up. <laughs> Whap it up. Whap, 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 whap. <laughs> yeah, we, we can talk a little bit about the what three words. I mean, it was launched in July of 2013, and it claims a resolution of three meters. 
Um, I don't know if that's really all that accurate. If it really is a three meter square. Um, and of course it's proprietary. It's a closed platform. Uh, the what free words people did reverse engineer it. And, you know, they were, they were running. I know when I did the cash in Northwest show, I don't know if they're still running or not. Um, I'm sure what three words had, had some harsh things to say about that. And, uh, you know, I mean, I personally, the only use I've seen out of it is geocache puzzles. I mean, it's, it's yeah. an, it's a neat way to encode stuff. I mean, I've seen a variety of puzzles down here in the Bay area that use it in all these different ways to do that. Well, pizza, uh, pizza ninja says that the uh, fun fact, the pizza, pizza, pizza location in what three words is a, uh, county uh, grounds park in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. So he thinks that that one's uh, a good representation, I gather. And then uh, Pickle Pickle Ninja is in Hungary. Pickle, Pickle Pizza, Pizza Ninja. Ninja. Huh. Pickle Pizza Ninja. Yes, sir. Is in Hungary. I, yeah. Is it Hungary? Coincidence? Probably. Um, I know with the video that I shared with you, I can't remember if you put that in the show notes for that randomized. Um, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really liked his use of what three words showing, you know, when he was using, you know, it's like what is wrong or something like that. He was actually showing the actual locations of where those words were taking him. And I know with what three words, I mean, you have to use a converter to get them i mean you have to have somebody who's got the api to do it that's the only way you can get those words it's like they're not available on your phone well unless you've got an app for that but it's like you know you can't look at your phone and say oh yeah here's where i am whereas you can go into the compass application which i know is included on every iphone i don't know i'm assuming there's something similar included on android and right there are your gps coordinates mm -hmm. you know and okay, they're not entirely accurate, but they're going to get, you know, you know, they're going to get you with, you know, they're going to be within a location where you are, you know, and those of us that are of the geocaching persuasion, you know, we usually have a GPS or we have a spot or we have an in reach or something like that, that, you know, we've got some way of letting people know, hey, I'm in trouble, you know, and you know, trying to use what three words for doing that when uh, they're using plurals of the same words where they're using, you know, non-plurals. Well, it's, it's... yeah. Well, and look at my misread just in this show. I read mm -hmm. pizza instead of pickle. Yeah, it said pickle pizza ninja. Yeah, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Excuse so, me. Yeah, I mean, it's there's only so many words in the English language that people tend to use, right? 40,000 is what I want to say. Well, that's something. not. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I was going to say 60? something like that. Yeah. Um, maybe I only use twenty thousand. Who knows? <laughs> um, but it's just not enough words to have a unique uh, three-word combination on every grid. So they reuse the common words, uh, plural and not plural, plural, plural and singular. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of those, it's tough to you know tell the difference. And yeah. If you're the difference is between a plural and a singular, then you know that could be half a globe away. Yes, it could be, and that's part of the problem, right? You know, I I remember just checking little squares around my house and how different, you know, just moving over a three meter square or whatever, how different the words are just in that three squares. I mean, they're not; it's not laid out in any kind of a logical way. They were up up that mm -hmm. word and on purpose that's not a word i can say confused it's, even yeah it's confused it's, it's confusing <laughs> for me to say that word but it describes it perfectly because we're talking about a word that's confusing on its own to be confusing it's kind of like gnu not linux you know same thing right or gonna gnu not unix excuse me there i go however for thing. for like our purposes again you could do a puzzle where it's those three words and you have to plug it into Google or something and figure out where it is. Right. Right. And I, I haven't seen any ones that use the plus codes yet. I'm sure they exist. 
Yeah. Um, but my sense yeah. is it's really not worth doing any of these things unless you're trying to do a puzzle. Mm-hmm. You know, for for almost everyone, they'll recognize the you know standard latitude longitude in you know WGS eighty four. Right. Now, you know, when it comes to ham radio, they that is standard practice is to use the maidenheads. And maidenhead is actually used in some contests. You are trying to collect as many uh, geographical grids as you can for some contests that you might be in. Yeah, you know, where you're trying to make as many contacts as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, that has a very special purpose again as I think does the uh, uh, plus codes, which is trying to make the communication of that location more error proof. Right. So it has a very valid reason for being there, but it doesn't seem like uh, maintenance has the precision that we would want as geocachers. No. And they did. I mean, I think I do think the, actually the original specification was only to six letters or six, excuse me, six symbols, however we want to put it. Mm-hmm. Um, there have people that have extended that further. Uh, the problem is that when you get to the third letter, you've already used uppercase, you've already used lowercase. So what do you use for the third set? And it's like, okay, do you go back to uppercase or emojis? Yeah, or emojis. Yeah, I mean, try. <laughs> try are we try get to an say, emoji? Yeah, smiley face, winky face, kissy face. I mean, okay, that's yeah, we're, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna need a new one. What three uh, emojis? What three? Emojis. There we go. Let's do that. Yeah, that'll be easy be... to express over the phone when you're in trouble. <sighs> yeah, it it works great in text messages. Yeah. Oh God, I remember when my daughter sent me a text message with at least thirty emojis in it, and I had Siri read out the entire thing. <laughs> it takes forever. I was laughing by the end of it just because it was just so ridiculous. Yes. I love it though. <laughs> yeah, actually Siri shortens it now. Five smiley faces. So it's not as bad as it oh. used to be. Just like Issaquah. She finally fixed Issaquah. It's like, why? <laughs> I know it's no longer fun. Oh, awesome. Uh Pizza Ninja wants uh, uh what three emojis? Three emojis. There we go. GSM times two wants uh, what three Klingon words? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I know there are Klingon puzzles out there. There's probably one in his area. Probably. Uh, All right. Well, well, there, Thank there's you a ton so that we didn't cover, though. So oh, we'll yeah. have to have you back to talk about uh, all of these other ones that uh, we didn't even get close to. Oh, you know, you know, I'm good for it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, but check out the Cash Maniacs website at cashmaniacs.com for more on the Geo Gear has including show notes for this and all of our episodes. We love hearing from our listeners, so leave us feedback by emailing geogearheads at cashmaniacs.com or through social media. Your support helps keep the Cash Maniacs shows coming. Please consider becoming a patron through the link on the website to support the Cash Maniacs shows. Geo Gear has is produced by Kun Stefanauer and Daryl Wanberg. The show is copyright 2021 by Daryl Wanberg. All rights reserved. Thank you.